This is a recording of a brief stop in New Oxford, Pennsylvania, 717624, made by Dave and I in our August 1976 phone trip. The equipment here is NX1, and this is our last stop in United Telephone Territory. This place, along with Gettysburg and Chambersburg before that, has semi-DTF. That is, you pick up the coin phone, get a dial tone, but then you have to deposit 10 cents before you can call anything. You can't call the operator or emergency or anything else, so the dial tone first only serves the function of letting you know the phone may work when you put a dime in. We did not investigate how the semi-DTF worked in this case, but Chambersburg, another NX1 in this same telephone company, was able to detect the presence or the absence of a dime very easily, such that it wouldn't do any good to try not using the touchtone pad and flashing the number with the hook switch instead. By the time you got to the end of the first digit, it already knew there was no dime. So it was probably the same situation here. It is noteworthy that this NX1 way of detecting the presence of a dime does not make a click the way the step method does, as we heard in Gettysburg, the last stop. When you put in a dime here, there's no loud click from the central office equipment. Now, unlike Chambersburg and other NX1s that I've heard, this one does not let you hear the internal pulsing very loudly. Here, where I dial my own phone number, you can actually hear crosstalk from other customers' rotary dialing louder than the internal pulsing that it uses to find the way to my line. This busy signal was shockingly loud. I've turned it down. As you can also see, we did not get a reverting circuit when I dialed my own number. It's interesting that after hanging up on the busy, we got a coin return followed by a reorder. Might it be that this NX1 has a reorder at the end of every phone call instead of the ubiquitous busy signal? Let's let the dial tone time out and find out. Here's an invalid local code going to the recording. You'll notice again that the internal pulsing that it uses to get the trunk to the recording is just barely audible. It pauses, and you can hear little bits of it, but mostly it's inaudible. We are unable to complete your call as dialed. Please check the number and dial again or ask your operator for assistance. This is a recording. This area did not have zero plus dialing or one plus dialing from coin phones. Here's what would happen if you dialed one plus a digit two through nine. After that, I'm going to dial 113, the old code for directory assistance. The fact that we still get a recording on 113 indicates that perhaps that code worked fairly recently. Finally, I try 10, which again goes to the reorder. On the second call, after I dial a 1, you can hear a touchtone 1 from another customer. Again, the crosstalk here between the originating registers, or regos as they're called, is quite loud. <laughs> On this next call, I got a dial tone, put my dime in, and then couldn't dial because I'd gotten a reversed polarity rego. Uh. 
Here's a call to the operator. This may actually be a cordless switchboard, but it works like an old-fashioned cord board in any case, because there's no provision for zero plus dialing, and you'll notice the call starts to complete as soon as I dial zero. Sorry, I got you by mistake. Pardon? I got you by mistake. I can't hear you. I got you by mistake. Huh? Goodbye. Hey, deaf operators are people too, you brash young bozo. Anyway, the operators are in Hanover, and all of the prefixes that are local to this place are in the Hanover operators area, except for the following one, New Berlin, Pennsylvania. <laughs> That went over a direct trunk where it dial pulsed five digits to an independent step. The vast majority of the recordings of NX1s that I have are NX1Ds, Greenville, North Carolina, and the one we're calling from would be examples of that. Now, here's a call to Hanover. This is an NX1E, which you will see this office MFs to. The NX1E was an electronically controlled crossbar switch which even had some custom calling features. It sounded similar to an NX1D, except it didn't pulse to itself in that same way. It set up its trunks faster. So here's a call from this NX1D to an NX1E in Hanover. The office code is 632. <laughs> That proves it. You can hear me saying over the dial tone. I assume what I'm talking about is that there's no supervision grace whatsoever, as in my dime was collected because the customer answered, and my hanging up right away didn't help. Now, if you were listening very carefully, you might have noticed that it MF'd seven digits to Hanover. Now, Hanover only has two office codes, 632 and 637, so really, they could get away with MFing the last five digits were it not for the fact that the Hanover NX1 is being used as a local tandem, and the other local codes here all go through that tandem. And what happens beyond that is also somewhat interesting, because this next one, 359, goes to the Hanover NX1, which ends up dialing the last six digits into something, there is a change in the quality on the line after it dials the 5 of 359, suggesting that the 5 goes somewhere. It may be that the Hanover NX1 is using another step to get to the final destination, Littlestown, which is where 359 is. <laughs> You know what? Just having heard this much of the tape, I would guess that maybe Hanover has an NX1 
and a step. Because if you'll listen to the way it dialed, the 5 is loud. Then you can actually hear a selector cutting through in the background, and then the next five digits of the number sound different. And it's probably going to turn out that the Hanover NX1 is using the Hanover step to get to the final destination there. Let's try 637, the other office code in Hanover, and see how that goes through. So there is a step and an NX1 in Hanover. 637, the step in Hanover, has modern tones, and we're connecting to it through the NX1E, which is dialing the last four digits. In that last example, of course, you can hear that it got the reorder just dialing the 100 group, 00, because you can hear it in the background as the last two digits are being dialed, and then after that it cuts through to full volume. Here are two more calls to the Hanover step via the Hanover NX1. First a soup test, then a ring. Finally, here's a call to 411 followed by a call to 611. Each of these again goes to the Hanover NX1E, which appears to be dialing into the step to get to 411 and then 611. On 411 it's hard to tell. On 611 it is clear that it is dialing in the step. The reason you can't tell so well is that this NX1 from which we're calling returns our dime after outpulsing the number, and so the dime return obscures the first little bit of sound from Hanover, but it does appear to be dialing into the step in both cases. I wish we had recorded a little bit more from this place, since with a local tandem it was especially interesting, and of course NX1s are very interesting in themselves as well. Now that I've had time to review the Vanceboro NX1E recording, I can say that Hanover is an NX1E. What makes it especially obvious is the timing. This switch pauses before it cuts through after the last digit. Here is 0000, zero being dialed out. pause after the last digit is exactly the same as the interdigital pause. They wrote the program so that it pauses after each rotary dial digit, and they didn't bother to put an exception so that it doesn't pause after the last one. Uh. 
The NX1Ds, by contrast, don't do that. And here's the new Oxford NX1D from which we are dialing, dialing zeros, and cutting through. As you can see, the delay after the last digit is a lot shorter than the interdigital delay. Just another reason that I suspect the Hanover switch to be electronically controlled. Anyway, that's it for this segment.